And Liam's going to join us as well in his role at our uh, COO at ZooCoins. Liam's focus has been on building organisational structures and developing and implementing operation and growth strategies whilst managing relationships with advisors and other stakeholders. Uh, thank you to our sponsors. And uh, Mark, if we could just have our slide up. Thank you. That would be great. That one. Beautiful. Well, I'm sure you're all uh, excited to hear a bit more from this man. I've had the privilege of knowing him for a very long time. Um, it's a little bit crazy, certainly a visionary. Um, but you, as you start to understand a bit more of his background, um, I think you'll see um, that it's a person like this that it takes to change the, the way the industry uh, looks at the technology that's been built and, and grows it and improves it. So um, I will dive in. I, everyone's heard a little bit about his background already, but I want to just take it a little bit further just to help everyone understand this guy before we let him go at it again. So um, in an earlier life, you enjoyed accounting for a start. Um, a corporate advisor fo focusing on asset protection, bankruptcy and litigation. You founded a global payment system in 2000 in an attempt to compete with PayPal. You've been pursuing a $4.3 billion damages claim against the Australian government for 23 plus years. Uh, you're a self-imposed temporary bankrupt with strategic objectives that will settle in the High Court. Uh, and you also, as you mentioned, in the early 2000s purchased Splitlock, which um, fragments data, um, which has become a very key part of ZooCoins as well. So accounting, global payment systems, asset protection, data security, and litigation, which you call a hobby. Yeah, there's a fair bit in that, Liam. <laughs> um, I think um, I just want to highlight a little bit about the bankruptcy because it's an intriguing, fascinating subject for me. Uh, my greatest heroes in the world are people like Henry Ford, Walt Disney, the great Sir Garfield Barwick, Chief Justice of the High Court, um, uh, Charles Goodyear and many others that were bankrupts in their early journeys. I'm actually, when I say self-imposed bankrupt, I'm actually bankrupt because um, there was a judgment debt that my trusts had acquired in relation to this litigation with the Commonwealth. So I'm probably the only person in Australia that is the debtor and creditor in the one proceeding, which gives full control of the bankruptcy. And there's good reason for it. In that 23-year journey, I've been trying to get into the High Court to constitutionally challenge a pretty significant issue on uh, a political accountability under Section 83 of the Constitution, and I had 12 attempts and couldn't get in. Finally, would you believe as a bankrupt I can, and that matter's coming up shortly. So it's a significant claim. We've actually made the budget nine years in a row some years ago as a quantifiable contingent liability against the Australian Government. So you can have a look at that yourself, Appendix B, page 11. It's a nice little note. And I don't give up. I have a never give up spirit. Um, and that's part of the journey. My racehorse uh, has been, is called alligator blood. It's a term that's used in poker that means to be resilient, tenacious and never give up. Um, I just mentioned that because it was a, a journey that was about my business trip uh, journey and, and the tenacity that the team around me has and where we see things. But uh, in retrospect, it's actually a never give up for my um, dearly beloved wife, recently passed away from cancer. So um, anyway, um, she told us all to move on and that's what we do. And I think that part of that journey, therefore, was where I wanted to solve the problems of global transfer of value. I got excited about Bitcoin. I thought this is the, this is the game changer that could solve those problems because you want something that allows you to get certainty on transfer. Uh, you avoid the issues with the, with the banking issues. You've still got to have regulation, don't get me wrong. Um, my entities are still regulated by Austrac as well. So uh, I fight the government on one hand and make sure you comply with the government on the other, uh, which is a hard task to do when you get angry at times. But um, Bitcoin was disappointing. When Satoshi brought that out, or whoever that is, the problem with that is that you've got a, a huge engine of blockchain miners that simply are there to validate transactions. And if I can just say this, when you take your books or your cash books in the old days or, or ledgers today to an accountant, you rely on that pers person with his knowledge and ability to produce a compliant set of accounts that relate to your affairs. Now, there's the first problem. You now have a third-party reliant issue in relation to those financial statements. And Satoshi didn't quite get it because the miners need massive computing power, 
which we've now seen, which has got environmental issues, you've got the greening issues and carbon emissions. And, and for what? It's just to make sure that the history says that there's a transaction that allows it to be valid as the new transactions enter the block. It absolutely made no sense to me or our team coming from that sort of accounting background. So the solution, Liam, as we know, which we're excited about, four and a half years in development, you only need a fraction of that data that recorded or stored in a cached environment by a computer or node, as they say, which is the last two transactions. The history resides with the peers themselves. That is, each and every one of us in this room has the entire transactional history of all of the uh, undertakings that you have and you validate amongst the peers yourselves. You actually only need the nodes to give you that cached information that is the truth that can validate and make sure there's no double spend and there's no you know, shirking the system in terms of what your coin balances are. If you lose that cash in your wallet, you then lose the, obviously in a, in a crypto sense, you lose the data that you had of those transactions. So that's the revolution, the next gen in terms of what, what is it all about to get to the bottom line that that digital transfer of value is real, is, is as real as your cash in, the, in your back pocket in the wallet, that then can do something with it. And the problem with Bitcoin and Ethereum, you've been hijacked in terms of making money on those platforms. I mean, you can't just walk out and make an NFT. You know, you need to know Solidity language and you've got developers and, and so forth that then allows you to create that at a cost, gas fees. My IT CTO, Robert Novak, realised that he can actually build a platform, layer one, where others can enjoy and build things on top where there's no transaction fees. There's, there's fractions, 32 decimals, that can mean that anybody in the world can have 0.0001 of a cent in their wallet and transfer securely between each other. We also realised, um, as Liam will tell you, uh, we built it on a PWA, which is a progressive web app. Now, you may be reading about the shit fight that's happening between Elon Musk and Apple, because Apple says, well, we'll take you out of the store. We are not in an Apple store. We are a progressive web app, which means that you are in full control and possession without any third party, like MetaMask, saying that your wallets can be shut down. So that's, a, that's an innovation in itself, let alone the, the two-factor authentication, as I've indicated, which I invite you to experiment and see amongst yourselves transferring a fraction of a coin. The staff are more than happy to... They won't give you too much of a coin because they're too valuable, but they'll give you a fraction, so you can have a look at that. But um, that's where I've come from. That's the background, and um, I'm proud of it. Um, it's been a very, very tough journey, and I've seen all the ups and downs in 35 years. Um, and again, like 1987, one or two years later, um, it's one of the greatest periods in history when you come out of a bear market, if you're positioned well to uh, take advantage of that. And every boom-bust cycle has that. Beautiful, mate. Um, you have touched on the, the, the two-factor authentication a little bit, and I'm, just for everyone here, I'd love you to just dive into it a little bit more because we're here to chat about it, solving a few industry issues. Sending coins to the wrong address it has... Well, it's an issue that people have experienced. Um, how have you solved that? I didn't solve it, but Robert did. Um, uh, certainly what happens is that as a sender, as you know, you've got a wallet address, which is your public key, um, and you can share that around and people send it. So it's one-way traffic. It's a bit like sending money to a BSB and account number. And we don't worry too much about sending it to the wrong account because we ring the bank up and we, de we demand and expect that they find that it went to the wrong account and pay you back. So again, you've got a third party that can give you some comfort that you may get recovery of your funds. Same with fraud in credit card transactions. When we launched the product uh, with our test market about six months ago, we had an unbelievable system where I could send a fraction of a zoo coin to anybody in this room on their mobile phones and instantly you get an instant pop-up wallet and you get the coin straight away. That product was a disaster. We had a 30% failure rate because people were sending it to wrong phone numbers. We had the telcos blocking a spam. Uh, as wonderful as that was, uh, it wasn't going to work on a scale that we're envisaging because we believe we can get 10 to 20 or 30 million downloads of wallets in a cycle of 30 days. Now, that's a big call. When you think of uh, Dogecoin, took nine years to download 4.4 million wallets. Uh, so what Robert built was a time lock system so that the sender sends a coin or fraction to a receiver using the uh, 
corresponding wallet addresses and it locks it into a cycle that checks against the nodes that it, that's real and as a result of that you are on a, uh, you actually see it in front of you, a time lock system that it won't transact and won't transpire unless both parties uh, are watching and seeing that the validation has happened through the wallet. So it's, we have not had, we've had a, not a single failure rate in relation to people losing coins. We have a failure rate from, with no disrespect, but human stupidity in terms of trying to work out how to copy and paste things into a wallet. But um, it's been unbelievably very satisfying that the results are there for people to then make sure they know that the coins are going from A to B 100%. If the line drops out or there's a power failure or your phone blanks out, um, the transaction won't affect, won't happen. And if there is an adjustment that you've missed, the nodes have cached the last two information, you lose the transaction, but you'll definitely have your balance on the last two coins. You can't screw it up. That's a game changer for this space. Thanks, mate. I've got two more questions, then we'll get everyone out and have a coffee. Uh, on the panel before, there was a bit of discussion about the barbecue question, uh, which ties in, for me, to complexity of the industry. Um, the opposite of that, obviously, being simplicity. How, how simplified have you made the system, or what's your experience been with making it simple for the general population to be able to adopt it and, in turn, get mass adoption? Yeah, look, I think um, when you look at it, it's very daunting, the, the just getting into the crypto space. It's not like getting that cash in your wallet. So we've, we've perfected, I believe, there'll be other wallets that can build on the back of this, by the way, it's open source code. Um, but we think we've perfected a download wallet with three functions. It's basically got your address, a send, there's a buy button there, and contacts. Um, and as a result of that, it's a very comfortable wallet for the consumer in general to, general to use. We're not targeting those that are already in the crypto space. We want a user case scenario that developers can build on the layer one at no cost all the products that you see and hear about, NFTs and UDAs, we call them. Um, and we want merchants to be comfortable that they can get guaranteed transfer for goods and services in the long term. And that's all open source code. We call that the, zoo, the ZooBot, which is like an API connection. Um, and of course, peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, we've got people in Queensland at the moment buying solar systems and trucks and all sorts of things, dealing one-on-one -on -one through the peer-to-peer -peer transfer of the coins which is very exciting on a global scale. So um, especially our micro payments in, in Africa. Beautiful. So micro one end, last question. Macro on the other. Um, soccer World Cup's on at the moment. There's a bit of soccer in the news. There's a guy that plays for Manchester United called Cristiano Ronaldo. He wants out. This is a hypothetical question, by the way. You're the owner of Sydney FC here in Sydney, and you're gonna buy Cristiano Ronaldo for $100 million with uh, no fees, no minors, no third party validation, no staking, no exchange rates, no banks. How quickly could you settle a Zucoin transaction and have $100 million in a Manchester United account? According to the set time clock we've done at 90 seconds, that's the maximum time. Um, we could bring that back to five seconds or, so we're talking tens of thousands of transactions per second. We increased that speed because we found that we've got people on the system that are as young as 15 and 14 and as old as 87. So there's an equal opportunity for everybody to not panic about the transactions. And uh, it's, it's an in, in, other than that, it's in real time. It's a real time transaction, um, not like we're seeing. We did some bank transactions today and we're waiting on some approvals to go through to each of the individual accounts. So um, what you see is what you get. It's real time between the peers. Beautiful, thanks mate. Uh, he's a unique character, um, we're very, Proud to be here as the naming rights sponsor of FinTech 22 teams out there. So feel free and come and have a chat to Alan and, and the team and um, hopefully meet a lot of you over the next couple of days. Thanks, everybody. Cheers.